everybody. We're going to get the show started. So my name is Nick. We've got two really quick rules before we start the show. So our first rule, I just need everybody to stay right in your seats. That way I can tell you about these awesome animals we've got today. And then I'll come right around so you guys can give them a pet too. Now our second rule, if you guys do pet any animals today, right after the show, I just need everybody to wash or hand sanitize your hands. That way we're nice and clean. Sound good everybody? Awesome. All right, guys. So you probably already saw my first little animal today. This is my little pal, Karoo. He is a budgie from Australia. Now, he does have these awesome blue feathers, but when these guys come from Australia, usually they don't have blue feathers. Instead, they have green feathers like this gecko right here on my shirt, and that's because these guys like to stay camouflaged up in the trees with all the leaves. That way, big animals like little lizards or big birds of prey can't find these little guys. So what I'm going to do with my pal, Karoo, I'm going to bring him around, and what I want you guys to to take a look at is his nose. Now boy birds have a blue and a purple nose, but what do you guys think that a girl's nose might be? Anybody got a guess what color their nose might be if they're a girl? Do you have a guess? Orange, very good guess, kind of close, almost, kind of like a reddish, yep. Pink, right, absolutely. Pink and brown are the two colors that you'd see if they were a girl instead. Oh yeah. <laughs> Take a look at that cool little beak of his. And these guys, they fly around Australia looking for seeds, leafy greens, and even little bugs too, like worms and flies. Oh my God. Do you want to see that? See that awesome little blue nose of his? <laughs> Do you guys want to see over there? You come right on over. Would you like to see that? Very cute little bird. I'm still trying to teach this little guy to get pet. He's my little bub, but he still doesn't even like me petting him too much yet. Awesome little blue nose. And if you look on both sides of his beak, he's got two big blue circles. Now, in nature, they don't actually have a name that they call each other. So instead, those little marks on their face are actually how they can tell each other apart. So he's got those two little blue dots, and then he's got some black dots right underneath it, too. Woo! There you go, buddy. <laughs> All right. Ooh, pardon me. Go right ahead. Bring him right back over here. Do you guys want to take a peek? Very cute little bird. Now these guys are known as budgies, but they're also known as budgie regar in Australia. They're also known as parakeets, and because of these black and white feathers on their back, they're also called shell parakeets as well. Good job. I'm gonna bring them right over here. You guys want to take a little peek? Can I see? <laughs> How do they like the weather? <laughs> this little guy is pretty good. He he always try, I always try to cover him with a little blanket to make sure he's nice and warm too. You to take a peek. See that awesome little blue nose of his? Now he is part of the parrot family, so these guys can learn up to 600 different words. My pal Karoo knows Bubba, Baby Bird, and Karoo. And sometimes when I play R2-D2 noises for him, he'll make those noises too. Come on over here, big guy. All right. Did we get to see you? I'll come right back over there. Come here, Karoo. Now I also did bring one of Karoo's pretty good pals today, and I'll show you her in just a moment. So if you look at that awesome little blue nose of his right there, very cool little bird. Good boy, Karoo. Would you like to see it? Very cool little nose. Good boy, Karoo. Let's bring you right back over here. Do you guys want to take a peek? Oh, there he is. Oh, look at the blue He's a very nose. nice little bird, too. Very cute. <laughs> and these guys are very social. They love hanging out in big groups in Australia. And once a year, most of the budgies in Australia will meet up, they'll all talk, and then they'll separate about two days later, too. Come on up, buddy. All right, guys, so my next animal is one of Karoo's very good friends. Her name is Lily, and she is a red-foot tortoise. Let me get her on out for you. Come on out, big lady. All right, guys. So this is my friend Lily. Lily is a red-foot tortoise. Can anybody guess why she might be called a red-foot tortoise? Because she has red feet. Exactly. She's got these big red scales on the front there. Now, those are very important because my friend Lily, she actually can't put her hands inside of her shell. So what she'll do first, she'll bring her head inside just like that. She'll bring it nice inside. And then she'll take these big armored feet of hers and put them right on top of her head. That way, nothing can try to get inside of her shell. Now, how we know that my friend Lily is a girl and not a boy tortoise is by the bottom of her shell. So if you look, she's got a totally flat uh, shell, kind of like a dinner plate. That means that she's a girl, so she can have her eggs inside of her shell. So if Lily was a boy instead, the bottom of her, uh, the bottom of her shell would look kind of like a cereal bowl. It'd be indented, and you'd have those nice little hourglass hips as well. So I'm going to bring this little lady around. If you'd like to give her a pet, you absolutely can. And if you want, try and pet her feet, too. They kind of feel like elephant skins. Pretty cool. Just bring her right over here. Would you like to try? Go right ahead. Good job, bud. Would you like to try? Go right ahead. Do you guys want to try? Go right ahead. So I've got a question for you guys real quick. What do you think my friend Lily likes to eat for food? Anybody got a guess? Grass. Yeah. Uh, plants. 
Absolutely. She loves plants and vegetables like leafy greens and lettuce and kale. Anybody have another guess? Wow. Grass, absolutely. She loves eating grass. She also likes to eat fruits and vegetables. Carrots. Carrots, absolutely. This little lady loves carrots. Her favorite food is little apple slices, though. You want to try? Go ahead. Do you have a question? Oh, did you have a guess? No? Do you want to give her a pat? Go right ahead. Good job. <laughs> Do you guys ever you want to try? Go right ahead. Good job. Do you want to try? Good job. Do you want to try, bud? Oh. Would you like to give her a pat? No. No, you got it, but <laughs> bring her right over here. All right, would you like to try? Go right ahead. Do you want to try too? Now, tortoises can live for quite some time. The bigger the tortoise, usually the longer they can live. But my friend Lily here, she can live until she's about 45 or 50 years old. It's a pretty long little tortoise. Would you like to try? I'm good. You got it. Do you guys like to try? Go right ahead. Do you want to try? Go right ahead. Good job. There you go, Lily. Good job, little missy. Would you like to try? Go right ahead. Good job. Did everybody get to pet Lily? Did I miss anybody? Yeah. Over here? You got it. I'm going to go right over to the back there. <laughs> Pardon me. Here we go. Hi, guys. You guys want to give her a pet? Go right ahead. Good job, guys. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> Good job. All right. So, if you remember, I said that my pal Lily and my friend Karu here are pretty good pals themselves. So let me show you why they're very good friends. So sometimes while I'm cleaning out my friend Lily's cage, my pal Karu likes to ride on her shell. Let's see if he'll do it. Good job, Karu. There you go, little guy. I'll bring him right out here see if she'll take a little walk, too. There you go. Good job. Do you want to try and walk around, Lily? <laughs> So she'll just uh, walk around looking for food and stuff like that, and my pal Karu will clean off the back of her shell and get all that dirt and grime off the back and all out of all those little cracks as well. Good job, guys. You being kind of lazy today, Lily? Let's go wash Yeah, <laughs> you got it. Come here, Karu. Good job, big guy. All right, everybody, we're going to move on to my next fluffy animal. Can everybody say bye to Lily for me real quick? Good job, Lily. Let's bring you right back over here. So my next animal actually comes from right around here. His name is Clay, but the ones that you see around here are a little bit smaller. He is a lion mane bunny. Let me get him on out for you. Come on out, big guy. There we go, big guy. All right, guys. So this is my friend Clay. Clay is a lion mane bunny. Could anybody guess why he might be called a lion mane bunny? Did you ever guess? Absolutely, he's got that awesome mane right there. Now these guys, bunnies are some pretty cool animals. When I bring him around, if you look at his eyes, his eyes are so big they're almost popping out of his head. Now that is actually a good thing for this little guy because he can see in front of him, to the side, and even behind. But since this guy's got all this hair, do you think he can see behind him too well? Probably not, right? So the hair doesn't help him too much with how he sees, but it does help him stay nice and warm. So what I'm going to do with this little guy, I'll bring him right around so you guys can give him a pet. But one other question, what do you think my friend Clay's favorite food might be? Carrots! Carrots, right, guys. Very good for his eyes and for his teeth, too. So let me bring him right around so you guys can give him a little pet. Do you guys want to try? Go right ahead. Good job. Let me get those feet of yours, Clay, so you don't start shaking. Good job, Jack. Go right ahead. Whoop, careful there, Clay. There you go, big guy. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Do you guys want to try over here? Good job. You want to try? Good job. Come here, big guy. Let me make sure you're nice and stable. Actually, let me start right over here. Do you guys want to give him a pet over here? No, you got it. Do you want to try? Go right ahead. Very soft bunny, this little guy is. Well, he's a pretty big bunny, too. <laughs> His name is Clay. Careful there, buddy. I know you're trying to jump up. Hang on, bud. I got you. Absolutely. His name is Karura. <laughs> This little guy doesn't like getting pet too much yet. I'm still trying to teach him that one. But this little guy likes to get pet. <laughs> Come right on over here. Pardon me. Go right ahead. Do you want to give him a pet too, bud? Whoop. Careful there, Clay. Go right ahead, bud. Do you want to try? Go right ahead. Good job. Let's come right over here. Do you guys want to give him a pet? Super, super fluffy. I do have a softer animal than this guy today, though. Do you guys want to try over there? I'm going to move this chair up just a little bit real quick. There you go. Do you want to try and give him a pet, guys? Go right ahead. Okay, go right ahead. Good job. 
There you go, Clay. Good job, big guy. Did you guys like try? <laughs> Good job, Clay. Good job, guys. I know your legs are getting a little shaky, big guy. Don't you worry. Seems a little skittish. <laughs> Whoop, careful, bud. He just never knows exactly how he's standing, <laughs> so he's always moving around a little bit. There you go, bud. Go right ahead. Good job. Would you like to try? Absolutely. Come right on over. Come here, Clay. Let me see you, big guy. Good job. Absolutely. This little guy, he can run pretty quick, too. Do you guys want to try? Come right ahead. Good job. Good job, Clay. Good job. There you go, Clay. See, buddy? You come out with me, and all you do is get good pets, big guy. <laughs> I know. You got the shaky legs, bub. Let me see. Very nice. Come here, big guy. Do you guys want to try? Oh, Clay, you're so funny, big guy. All right, guys. So one other cool thing about bunnies before we move on to our next animal. Around here, if you see those little tiny skinny bunnies, cool thing about those little guys, they can actually change the color of their fur. So in the winter time, their fur will get in a little bit thicker and it'll turn white so they can camouflage with the snow. And then in the spring and summertime, their fur gets really thin and it turns back to brown like my friend Clay. That way they don't get too hot and they can camouflage with the leaves and trees and stuff like that as well. Good job, Clay. So let's move on to my next reptile. Can everyone say bye to Clay for me? Good job, Clay. Let's bring you right back over here, big guy. Good job, pal. All right, so my next animal, unfortunately, doesn't get along with my pal, Caroos. So we gotta put him away real quick. Come on over here, big guy. I thought you said he'll start dancing, make a lot of noise. Oh, he will, you'll see him do that in just a second. <laughs> so my next animal comes from South America. His name is Rocky, and he is a yellow carpet python. Let me get him on out for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, big guy. All right, guys. So, this is my pal, Rocky. Rocky is a yellow carpet python. Ready, guys? So, these guys like to hang out down in South America, and these guys are arboreal snakes, which means they like to hang out up in the trees. Now this guy, he'll hang out in the sun for most of the day because he is a cold-blooded creature, so he needs the sun to get him nice and warm. Now this guy, he'll usually only eat once or twice in a whole month, and that's because this guy will eat something three times the size of his head here. And since he's a snake, he can't chew on his food like we can, so he's got to eat it whole and then keep it in his belly for a little while. So that's why he usually only eats twice in a month. Now what I'm going to do with this big guy, I'll bring him right around so you guys can give him a pet if you'd like. And, just like that. Try and feel all of his scales, they're very, very cool. And if you feel the bottom, they're a little bit different than the top. Now one kind of cool thing about this guy's scales, they are made of the stuff called keratin, which is the same stuff as our fingernails and our hair as well. Kind of cool. So let me bring this little guy around. We'll start in the back over here this time. Come here, Rocky. There you go, big guy. Careful, bub. Good job. Oh, that's your favorite. Kind of feels like rubber or plastic. Do you want to try, guys? No, you got it, buddy. You want to try? Go right ahead. He's a very nice snake. Good job, guys. Come here, Rocky. Would you like to try one? Come right ahead. Very cool scales. Very smooth, kind of kind of rubbery, plasticky. Super nice snake. Might look a little slithery, but he's a very nice guy. Absolutely. <laughs> a good scarf, too. <laughs> good job, guys. That's just his little finger. Since he doesn't have any arms or legs, he uses the end of his tail like a finger. How long have you had him? This guy, I believe, is about six years old now. He can get up to about 12 feet long, so we still got a little while to go. Do you want to try, bud? No. You got it. Do you want to try? Good job. Very, very smooth. His scales are a little bit bumpy since he's a nice and big snake. Smaller you go, usually the smoother that they are, too. Absolutely, go right ahead. Feels like rubber. Kind of like rubber, right? Absolutely. 12 feet long, oh my god. Well, this guy can get 12 feet long. I think he's about six and a half or seven feet right now. Once he gets older, he'll get to about 12 feet long. Yeah, it might be 11 feet. Oh, yeah, careful near the face. <laughs> Do you want to try, bud? His name is Rocky. Do you want to try? No, you got it, bud. Do you want to try? Sniffing around. <laughs> Good job. 
Every time he sticks out that little tongue, he's sniffing. Good job, pal. You got it. Go right ahead. Pretty neat, right? Kind of like rubber or plastic. Same thing as our fingernails, too. All right, so since my friend Rocky doesn't have any arms or legs like we've got, he's got to slither around on the ground in a big S pattern. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go. Rocky. Ooh, careful, bud. There as you go. Get your finger out of my shirt, bud. Ooh, careful, Rocky. Come here, bud. There you go. So these guys, they also don't see like me and you. These guys have what we call infrared vision. So the hotter something is, the easier it is for this guy to see it. And the colder something is, the more invisible it is to him. So if you were sweating up a storm, he'd be able to see you from way, way far away. But if you were freezing up, he probably wouldn't be able to see you at all. Good job, big guy. Come on up, rock star. All right, guys, so let's move on to our next animal. Can everyone say bye to Rocky for me? Good job, big guy. Right back over here, pal. There you go. Tail back in there. All right, guys. So my next animal also comes from South America, just like my pal Rocky. But this next guy is one of the softest animals in the whole world. His name is Seymour, and he lives way up in the mountains. He is a chinchilla. Let me get him on out for you. Again. Good job, big pal. All right, guys. Good job, big pal. So. Are you ready? <laughs> Let me see more. All right, ready, guys? Good job, Seymour. Good boy. All right, guys. So this is my friend Seymour the Chinchilla. These guys come from South America. They live way up in the mountains, mainly the Andes Mountains. And they like to live about 4,000 feet up high. Now, this guy is one of the softest animals in the whole world. And that is because on our heads, out of every little follicle, which is like a little hole on your head, one hair grows out of that. But on this little guy, out of every little hole on his body, he has 200 hairs. So he's got about 200 times more hair than we have. Now, since he's so soft, he actually cannot go in the water. Because if this guy tried to take a bath, he'd get really stinky and he'd get a little bit sticky too. So instead of a water bath, these guys take a dust bath. So let's see what that looks like. Go right ahead inside, buddy. So he likes to roll around in that dust. Let's see if he'll do it. There you go, Seymour. You want to try again, buddy? There you go, big guy. And he likes to poke his head out too. <laughs> good job, pal. Go. Pretty cute little guy. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. So these guys like to run around the jungle looking for things like nuts, berries, leafy greens like lettuce and kale, and bugs if they can find them as well. He is part of the rodent family, so he is related to rats, chipmunks, squirrels, and mice. And he's even related to guinea pigs as well, but guinea pigs are part of a smaller family too. So let's bring him right over here. So what I'm going to do with this little guy, I'm going to bring him around so you guys can give him a nice pet, see just how soft he really is. But before I do that, one really cool thing about these guys, they don't have a lot to defend themselves. So if a big animal was running up to my friend Seymour here and tried to grab onto his fur, Seymour can actually throw his fur off of his body so he can keep on running away. And then the predator will just be left with a big mouthful of fur. Kind of funny too. So let's bring this little guy around. We'll start right over here. Do you guys want to try? These guys are chinchillas, named after the chinch, uh, Chincha tribe from the Native Americans. Absolutely. Those are one of my favorites, too. Very cute. <laughs> very, very soft. Good job, Seymour. You're doing so good, buddy. Absolutely. Super clean. That's like a vacuum. Sucks up all the water. Come here, big guy. So these guys, they do come from South America, but there is actually more chinchillas right here in Massachusetts than in all of South America today. And that's because they came up here at first for their awesome fur and now as pets. Would you like to try? Do you want to try, buddy? Go ahead. Would you guys want to try? Go ahead. Super soft. Do you want to try? Do you want to try? Go ahead. Go right ahead, absolutely. Super, super soft, this little guy is. He loves the pets. Good job, guys. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Super, super soft. Softest animal in the world. Only one animal has thicker hair, and that's a sea otter. Not nearly as soft, though. Do you guys want to try over here? Good job. Do you have a question? 
what they eat. These guys like to eat nuts, berries, leafy greens, and fruits and vegetables too. Very good question. Super, super soft. One of my favorites too. Good job, big guy. Do you guys want to try over here? I'll turn around so you can take a good picture too. Good job, Seymour. Ooh, careful there, buddy. Pretty good at keeping balance. <laughs> you got it. Did everybody get to pet Seymour? Oh, did you guys get to? Perfect. Good job, guys. You come right over there. Sorry about that. Go right ahead. Go right ahead, What was that? The ears like that? Well, his ears are pretty special, actually. Since this guy has so much fur, he uses his ears to cool down. He stands up on a cliff and lets the wind blow through him to get nice and cool. Very good question. Good job, big guy. All right, guys. So we are going to move on to my next animal. Can everybody say bye to Seymour for me? Good job, Seymour. Let's bring you right back over here, big guy. We're over here. Got you right here. There you go, bud. All right. So my next animal. What's up, bud? Oh, that's our last animal. We'll see him very soon. So my next animal also comes from Australia, just like my friend Karoo. Her name is Yoshi, and she's a real-life dragon. Let me get her out for you. You ready, Yoshi? Good job. All right, guys. So this is my friend Yoshi. She is a bearded dragon. So these guys like to live in Australia. Now the reason why they're called a bearded dragon, right underneath their chin right here, they've got an awesome little defense mechanism. And what they do, they blow up their chin like a big balloon, it turns almost completely black, and then they do a little dance with their head that looks like this. They'll go up and down, just like that. And that means, hey, you're getting a little bit too close to where I'm hanging out, you might want to get out of here. And if they still come too close, she'll run up a little bit closer, puff up her body like a big pancake, and show off all these cool spikes on the side. But but those are just a trick to make other animals think that if they tried to bite her, it would hurt their mouth. These spikes are actually super, super soft. So when I bring her around, you guys can definitely give them a feel if you want. So I'll bring this little lady around. These guys like to eat things like fruits and vegetables, little tiny bugs like crickets, ants, and worms. But Yoshi's favorite food is scrambled eggs. She loves them. <laughs> We're gonna come around with this little lady real quick. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> She's just moving her tail all over the place. He's making good pets because they know a lot of friends. Absolutely. Yeah, these guys are pretty good. Very nice lizards, too. They'd rather just run away. They don't want to bite anybody or harm anyone. Very good lizards. Would you like to try to pull it ahead? Good job, Yoshi. Do you guys want to try over here? Go right ahead. Very nice little dragon. Stays nice and small, too. <laughs> Do you want to try? Good job, guys. You guys want to try over here? Very cool scales. She's a leatherback bearded dragon, so her scales are a little bit softer. Do you want to try? Do you want to try? Oh, you already got the pattern? You got it. Go right ahead. It's cool. You got to learn about these guys? One of my favorite little lizards. Bearded dragon, but also known as a pagoda, too. Would you like to try? Oh, you got it, bud. <laughs> Do you guys want to try over here? Would you like to try? Would you like to try? Do you want to try over here? Do you want to give her a pet? Go right ahead. Good job. There you go. Do you want to try? Good job. Good job. Good job. There you go. This little lady's pretty soft. She's a leatherback bearded dragon, so she's got some softer scales than your usual bearded dragon. Absolutely. She's a very nice lady. She doesn't like biting very much. She'd rather run away. <laughs> Good job. Good job, little Missy. Absolutely, yeah. She's a little prey animal. Good job, Missy. All right, guys, so we're going to move on to our next fluffy animal. Can everyone say bye to Yoshi for me? Good job, Yoshi. Let's bring it right back over here. Mm -hmm, this one. There we go. All right. So my next animal comes from right around here. Her name is Flower. 
Usually, if you'd see one of these girls in the woods, you'd want to stay far away because they can make you pretty stinky. But we don't have to worry about that today. Flower is a skunk. Let me get her on out for you. Come on out there, baby. Good job, Missy. <laughs> All right, guys. So, this is my friend Flower. Let me get those hands of yours. So Flower is a striped skunk from right around here. Now she did get her st uh, stink gland removed, so we don't have to worry about that smell. She is part of the weasel family. So these guys are related to ferrets, fisher cats, and even wolverines as well. Now she is also an omnivore, which means she'll eat pretty much anything. She'll eat meat, plants and vegetables, fruit, but my little friend Flower, her favorite food is pasta salad. She loves eating pasta salads. So this little Missy, usually, ready guys? <laughs> if you'd see this little Missy in the woods, what they'd do first is they'd stomp their back feet, and that means, hey, you might want to back up because I can make you pretty stinky. And if you get too close, they'll lift up that tail and they'll spray. And these guys can spray you from 10 feet away, so they don't have to be too close either. So what I'm going to do with this little lady, I'll bring her right around so you guys can give her a pet and what I want you guys to do take a look at her cute little face and also she's got some big claws take a look at those too she uses those for digging underground and getting those little grubs out those are one of her favorite foods as well good job guys here's one try over here go right ahead she got some very soft fur she's a very nice little lady would you like to try go right ahead not every day you get to pet one of these little missies <laughs> good job flower right over here pardon me do you want to try good job there you go <laughs> Did you guys get a try? Go right ahead. Yeah. Go right ahead. Good job. Would you like to try? Go right ahead. Do you want to try? Good job. Do you want to try, pal? Do you want to try, bud? Yeah, come right on over. Go right ahead. Ooh, hang on, let me, uh... No, no, no worries. You squeeze him a little more there. Go right ahead, bud. Good job. Yeah, give her a nice little pet. She loves getting pet on the head, too. Go right ahead. Good job. Do you want to try? Go right ahead. She's a little stinky, but that's just because she's a skunk. Kind of comes with the territory. There you go. Go right ahead. She's kind of got that musky weasel scent to her. Absolutely. I know. It kills me every time. <laughs> you want to see? Pretty cute, huh? <laughs> Big claws, too. Did everybody get to pet my friend Flower? You got it. All right. Good job, Flower. Could everyone say bye to Flower for me real quick? Good job, Flower. Let's bring you right back over here, Missy. All right, guys. There we go. So my next animal comes from South America. Another furry little Missy, but not furry like these last guys. Her name is Rosie. She has eight arms and eight eyes, and she is a rose-haired tarantula. Let me get her on out for you. All right, you ready, Missy? Alright guys, so this is my friend Rosie. Good job, little Missy. Good job. Come on, hear me. Okay. Alright guys, ready? So, this is my friend Rosie, the rose-haired tarantula. These guys come from South America. They are a pretty big spider. Now these guys, they are not the biggest spider in South America. The biggest is a gargantuan bird-eating tarantula. And they can get the size of about like a clock or a small dinner plate as well. Now these guys, since they are quite big, they don't like climbing up high too much. And that's because they can't even hang from their own web. If this lady tried to hang from a tree, she'd just fall right to the ground. She might go splat too. So instead, this little lady likes to stay right on the ground. And usually they'll make their webs on the ground as well. That way, if a bug is walking around and accidentally steps in their web, she instantly gets a nice free little meal. So what I'm going to do with this lady, I'm going to bring her around. Now we can't pet this girl, and that's just because all the hairs on her body, if they get on us, they can make us quite itchy. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring her around, show you guys where her eyes are, and I'll pull out a little bit of web for you too, if I can get her to bring some out. So start right over here, if you guys want to take a look. Look right on top of her head right there, that little black dot, that's all of her eyes. You see that on top? Mm -hmm. Can you make her spin a web? Absolutely, ready? So we go just like that. Do you see that? Oh! Kind of cool, right? It's almost invisible. I can see it. Let me see if I can take out a little bit of web for you, too. Do you guys see that? 
Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> now, if you look at Rosie, she's got that big circle thing on the back. That is her abdomen. And in there is like water kind of moving around. But the water is actually her webs. So as soon as her water touches these little finger, it actually turns right into web when it touches the air. That way she can just keep on pulling it out. So sometimes when a spider is actually pulling their web out, it actually can be a little bit drippy too, kind of weird. You want to see? see if you look right on top. And spiders will also eat their web again so that they can reuse it as well. Yeah. Right over here. Do you guys want to see over here? Like right there. She is venomous. Her venom isn't deadly to humans. It would hurt about as much as a bee sting, though. It's not too bad. If you look right there on top, that little black dot is all of her eyes. And right back here, those are her spinnerets, little fingers to pull out the webs with. Right over here. These guys really are super, super nice. They would rather not hurt us. Uh, if you scare them, then they'll try to throw their hairs at you and stuff like that. But I was terrified of them when I first had to hold them. But now that I've got to hold her a lot, they're really nice animals too. So we are going to move on to my last animal. Can everybody say bye to Rosie for me? Good job, Rosie. Let's bring it back over here. Pull that inside for me, little Missy. Good job. Perfect. Good job, Missy. So, actually, let me put you back in here first before I bring in my next guy. <laughs> All right, guys. So my last animal for the day, his name is Chompy. He comes from Florida, and he is an American alligator. Let me get him on out for you. Did you guess it was an alligator? <laughs> Come on, big guy. Good job, pal. All right, big guy. Good boy. All right, guys. This is my good friend Chompy. For you, buddy. So, this is my good pal Chompy. Chompy is an American alligator. These guys are also related to crocodiles and caiman as well. Some jungle dwelling kind of dudes. Now, alligators, there's actually only two left in the whole, uh, two species left in the whole world. The American alligator, like down here in Florida and all the way up to Virginia and also the Chinese alligator. Those are the last two kinds. But they are also related to like saltwater crocodiles and jungle dwelling caiman. But how we know that this guy is an alligator is by his nose and the way he walks around. So if you look, his nose is like a big circle at the end. That means that he is a nice guy and he's also an alligator because crocodiles will have a very pointy and long nose instead. And the second way is how he walks around. So let me see if I can get him to walk real quick. Everybody? Now, alligators will always lift up their bodies and they'll keep their legs underneath their, are, uh, underneath their bodies like this. So alligators walk a little bit like this, but crocodiles always keep their bellies right on the ground and their arms out to the side, like 90 degree angles, like this. And they'll always kind of walk around like this. So an alligator walks like this, crocodile kind of slithers around like that instead. Come here, buddy, you want to try and walk real quick for me? There you go, big guy. So if you look, he's lifting up his belly just a little bit, being kind of lazy today. But that's how you can tell he's an alligator as well. Now, he is quite small and cute right now, but when this guy gets to be an adult, he'll reach about 12 feet long and almost 1,000 pounds. So he doesn't stay a very small little guy for very long. So I'm going to bring this little guy around. If you'd like to give him a pet, you absolutely can. And right after everybody gives him a pet, I want to show you guys a really quick trick, too. Oh, absolutely, right? Just like that. No problem. Go right ahead. He's got some really cool scales on this guy. Absolutely. Good job, Chomster. You're handsome. Oh, that's a great. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Go right ahead. Good job, Chompy. Go right ahead. Absolutely. Oh my God, it's. Go right ahead. Yeah. Very good question. If you look, he uses this to swim around in the water, so it's got to be a little bit more squiggly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do you guys want to try? Okay, right, bud. Good job. You want to take a picture? Oh, please. Absolutely. Go right ahead. Not every day you see these in a public library. <laughs> absolutely. If you'd like, I can give you a business card right after. You got it. Good job, guys. Would you like to try? Good job. Do you guys want to try up front? Go right ahead. Awesome scales on this guy. Very, very good guy. So I've got a question for you guys real quick. 
So my friend Chompy here, do you guys think he's more related to a lizard or to a bird? Lizard. A lizard? You think a lizard? If you said bird, you would be correct. These guys are actually more closely related to a bird. Kind of weird. Do you guys want to try it? Go right ahead. Very awesome scales. His back ones are very hard, but if you feel underneath, he's kind of squishy. Go right ahead. Good job. Should I try? Go right ahead. Good job. Good job, big guy. Would you like to try? Okay, good job. Good job, Chompster. Would you like to try? Go right ahead. Hang on, buddy. I got you. Don't you worry. No fretting, my little friend. Would you like to try? Go right ahead. Oh, come on, little bud. Go right ahead. Good job. Ooh, nice and gentle. Nice. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good job, Chomster. All right, guys. So I've got one more thing I want to show you before the end of the show. We're going to make my friend Chompy fall asleep. So I need everybody to be nice and quiet. And if you're in the back and if you want to move up front real quick, come right on up. So, very gently, very quietly, we flip him right on over onto his back. Get back up, guys. There we go. Nice and gentle. And once he's on the ground, we tickle him. Once he's nice and asleep, we tickle him. Hey, there you go, big guy. Good job, Chomster. He wasn't asleep. Well, sometimes he keeps one of his eyes open, kind of like a dolphin, too. Good job, big guy. All right, everybody, this was my last animal for the day. Can everybody say bye to Chompy for me? Good job, Chomster. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed all the animals. And remember to wash your hands right after, too. Bye, guys. I'm Karen Stolf with the Library Director. We're very pleased today to um, honor Nancy Cappellini, the former director who passed away in, at, at the end of December. Um, we're having this day to, we like it to be an annual event, um, to have kids come in. As Nancy was a former children's librarian, so she really loved kids and helped the kids of Hanson. Um, so we wanted to have this event to bring all the community together um, and have a great time. We had the reptile show, we had face painting. Um, it's been really, really great. We have a great turnout. We're very happy about that.
Thank you. 